Hey, welcome to Grandma's YouTube. Today, I thought I would read a book that I've just got. It's a Marge in Charge book. It's a collection of stories. There's nine. Some of you might have heard these stories before, but I thought maybe some of them you haven't heard. I thought I will read you. So the very first story is called Marge Babysits. That's Marge. Look how she's dressed. My name is Jemima Button. I am seven years old and I'm the tallest girl in my class. My little brother is Jakey Pants, though grown-ups call him just Jake. And he is four years old. He loves wrestling and dinosaurs and ice cream. We live with our mummy and daddy in an ordinary house on an ordinary street. We used to be an ordinary family until the day our babysitter came. It was five o'clock on Thursday and our family was sitting around the table. Our parents were dressed up in their smart clothes. Why do we need to hire a babysitter? Asked Jake. Because we're going out for dinner, explained Daddy, patting Jakey Pants on the head. Mummy smiles and she says, we need someone here to look after you. I can see that my baby brother is not happy. He begins to cry. Well, I think he was fake crying. He wails and flails his arms around like a baby penguin on slippery ice. Do you want to read a story? Asks Daddy, handing Jake his favourite book. Stupid book says Jake and he throws it on the ground. Oh no, I bite my lip. When Jakey Pants starts throwing things, it means he is headed for a tantrum. What will our new babysitter think? The last time we had a babysitter, Jake spent the whole time hiding in his room, building a Lego weapon so that he could destroy her. He was cross at her because she scolded him for covering Daddy's desk with stickers. And then I had to peel them all off. I think that's a picture of the babysitter and the stickers. I hope Jakey behaves himself tonight. He can be very stubborn and naughty when he wants to be. There's your favorite for dinner. Macaroni and cheese, says mummy as she puts it into the fridge. Jake's face lights up, but not for very long. And broccoli, he scowls. I don't want broccoli. I definitely do not want a babysitter, Jake shouts. Even if the broccoli is on your blue T-Rex plate, mummy says, especially then, Jake retorts. Mummy gives daddy a panicked look. Everyone knows that my little brother has two rules. One, he won't wash his hair because he says it's boring. And two, he won't eat broccoli ever. But then we meet someone extraordinary, our new babysitter. Ding dong. That's the doorbell. Straight away, Jakey stops crying and races to the door. He peeks through the window, then takes off his shorts and puts them over his head. Jake always does this when he wants to wrestle or to stop someone from coming into our house. Like Uncle Desmond. Put your shorts back on, Mummy says sternly. Daddy is opening the door. Meet Marge, Daddy says in the voice he saves for his boss at work. I peep from behind Daddy as I always feel shy around new grown-ups. There she is, Marge, our new babysitter. Ooh, what's she gonna be like? Standing in our hallway is a person so small that she only comes up to Daddy's armpit. She is wearing a little yellow woolly hat and some reading glasses. Can you see what Marge looks like? What's this? Is this a mouse in her pocket? So this is the babysitter Marge. Her face looks serious too, and I worry that she will be strict. 
Like my nursery teacher, Mr. Mrs. Ratley, who made us eat all our lunch, even when the sandwiches were soggy. She has a big round belly and skinny legs with knees as knobbly as twigs. Hi Marge, I say, and I give her my bravest smile. But Jake has only noticed how small Marge is. She is definitely not tall enough to ride a roller coaster. She could even fit in Jake's cardboard box that he uses for his superhero hideout. Are you a kid or a grown up? He asks, peering closely at her. Definitely a grown up, answers Marge gleefully. Then why are you so small? demands Jake. Well, why are you so small? asks Marge right back at him. Um, because I'm only four years old, Jake rolls his eyes. He is brilliant at eye rolling even though mummy told him that it's rude to do it to grown-ups. You look 100 years old, snorts Jake. Mummy and daddy look worried that Marge might be offended, but instead she throws her head back and laughs. This makes me feel a little less nervous. So I say, I'm Jemima. Nice to meet you, Marge says, shaking my hand the way adults do. It makes me giggle. Are you a Christmas elf? Asks Jake. Let me see if your ears are pointy. Jake is now peering at the side of Marge's head. Daddy <coughs> coughs nervously and steers Jake away from Marge. The rules are on the fridge, Mummy tells Marge. If you have any questions, ask Jemima. She's my big girl. We will be back by eight o'clock. Then she turns to us. Remember to be polite and say please and thank you when Marge takes care of you. We will, I promise, I say. I hear mummy telling Marge that it's very important for Jake to eat all his dinner, especially the broccoli. And wondering if she could possibly try to wash his hair. They're the two things that Jake does not like. Then she gives Marge the number of her mobile phone, just in case of an emergency. Mummy and Daddy both give me a big hug. The butterflies in my belly aren't so fluttery now that we've met Marge. I'm very curious about her, but still a little nervous that my little brother might misbehave. There's a picture of Jemima. To my surprise though, he lets mummy hug him goodbye, which he never normally does. We stand on the doorstep either side of Marge and wave as my parents leave. Bye. The minute the car has gone, we head inside. Are you a dwarf from Snow White? Jakey asks. No, and I'm not an Oompa Loompa either, says Marge. Oompa Loompas only exist in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I say, are you a jockey? Do you gallop horses in a race? Jake asks. Marge shakes her head. Did you drive here? How did your little feet reach the pedals? Asks Jake. I am sure you can lower the steering wheel, I offer helpfully. I actually use a booster chair, Marge says. Then she leans in secretively. Being small means I can visit the museums at half price. She brags as she takes off her glasses and her pea green coat. Then Marge pulls off her hat. Guess what is underneath? Long, colourful hair that falls halfway down her back. Green and blue and orange, red and yellow hair, like a waterfall of colour. So there's Marge there, and there's Jakey and Jemima, and there's the hair. We can't see all the colours, but you can sort of see the different shades there. That's a surprise though, that Marge has got all that colour hair. I wonder if Mummy would let Marge look after us if she saw her crazy hair. Wow, I say. Marge crosses her feet underneath her and exhales. <gasps> I was born Marjorie Beauregard Victoria Pontefoy 
and I am a duchess. A duchess, I ask, blinking. Are you Dutch? Dutch, hey, Grace and Ava Rose, that's where you live. Marge laughs and little creases form beside her blue eyes. No, the King of England's fourth son is my Uncle Leonard. Do you have any children, I ask? Marge shakes her head. But I have ten pets. Three white miniature ponies, three swans, two polka dot Pomeranian puppies, a cheeky long tooth ferret and an albino water buffalo. I can barely breathe with excitement. I used to live in the palace, but the royal guards wouldn't allow my pets to sleep in my bed. Did you know that there are 779 rooms in a royal palace? I was always getting lost, says Marge. Sometimes I would fall asleep looking for my bedroom. So my pet friends and I set out on an adventure to find a new home. Oh, Marge has got an exciting life. Have a look there. I think you can see that's Marge with all of her pet friends. Jakey is behaving really well and I can tell that he's enjoying the story that Marge is telling. Have you ever been on a bus? Jakey asks. He's obsessed with buses. Of course, sniffs Marge. I have ridden a red double-decker bus, an airport bus and a mini bus. Wow! Jakey is really impressed with Marge now. But my favourite mode of transport is the royal coach pulled by eight Palomino donkeys, says Marge. I want to ask Marge all sorts of questions about her animal friends and her life, but suddenly she jumps up and says, hmm, now your mummy wants me to read the rules on the fridge. Hop to it. We follow her to the kitchen and Marge reads the list out loud. One, dinner is at 5.30. There's macaroni and cheese and broccoli in the fridge. Two, playtime next, but all toys must be put away afterwards. Three, Bath time is at 6.30 and please try to wash Jakey's hair. Bed by 7.30. I would much rather listen to more of Marge's story, but Marge is looking very serious now, now that she's read Mummy's list. Hmm, I think we might need to add a few new dinner rules, says Marge. <gasps> Jake groans and my stomach sinks. I won't eat broccoli, I won't. Not now, not ever, says my brother haughtily. There he is, look. Marge just raises one eyebrow. She grabs a napkin and she folds it. I have been to many exotic dinners all around the world. I have dined with princesses, knights and lords and ladies and I have my own royal dinner making rules says Marge as she finishes crafting the napkin into a splendid chef's hat and pops it onto her own head. Jake and I exchange an excited look. Cooking? Our new babysitter is going to let us cook? I race to the bottom drawer and find our aprons. We quickly put them on and tie up the bows. Right, let's see, says Chef Marge. Rule one. Prepare the food. Jemima, you will be the chef's helper. I have no idea what that is about, but I begin gathering all the ingredients that Marge tells me to, and Marge informs Jakey that he will be the waiter. Do waiters get to wrestle? Jake karate kicks in the air. See, Marge has got her chef's hat on, and there's Jakey and Jemima putting on their aprons. Yes, but first they have to ask the dinner party guests what they want for dinner and write it down in a little pad. She hands a notebook and silver pen to Jake. Mm, but I can't write words yet, except for my name, Jake sighs. Don't worry, says Marge, I read squiggles. I can even read the handwriting of all my pets. How else do you think we communicate? Wow. I've always wondered whether chickens could handwrite or rather claw write. It all started when my camel asked me to translate a love letter she had received from a dairy cow. 
said Marge. Now that was tough because cows don't use their hoofs for writing very much. What do they use? asked Jake curiously. Their tails, of course, cried Marge. Then she gives Jakey and me a bowl. You know, Prince Leonard won the heart of my aunt with a red velvet birthday cake. Baron Dinkleditch wasn't pleased, mind you, said Marge. Jake and I crack eight eggs into a bowl. Jakey accidentally drops in half of the shell, but we just cover it in a pile of flour. Then we add a mountain of cereal and a tea bag for good measure. Marge tells us she thinks that we are very creative chefs, but I am not sure that Mummy would agree with her. Once everything is cooking nicely, Marge gets the list out again and adds another new rule. Rule two, lay the table. Jake groans, but Marge tells us it's the only way to decide on our guest list for the dinner party. You mean we're inviting guests to eat with us? I ask. Of course, she replies. Dinner should always be a dinner party and the perfect number of dinner guests is six. So we decide to include Archie, our pug-nosed puppy dog, but we still only have four. We will lay the table for six anyway and maybe some special guests will surprise us, Marge says. We place three plates and three forks and knives for every guest, but because Archie can't use cutlery, I give him a pair of chopsticks. What's next on Mummy's list, I ask Marge, hoping she'll have some extra fun rules. Marge toots a pretend trumpet. Can you see the dinner party? The table is all laid with the crockery and the cutlery, and there's Marge tooting on a pretend trumpet. We're gonna stop there. I wonder what's going to happen next. Maybe tomorrow I'll do some more of the story. Thank you for watching Grandma's YouTube. If you like it, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I love you.